An apocryphal tale that Christopher Columbus visited Iceland in 1477 and learned of land to the west is a fantastic story, but did it happen? The account says that Columbus was informed of the existence of the New World by the descendants of the Vikings and Norse, whose stories told how their people had themselves been there hundreds of years earlier. This was in the famous voyage of Leif Eriksson in 1000 AD, where the discovery of marvellous lands dubbed Markland, Heluland and Vinland were recorded by Norse explorers who travelled from Iceland via Greenland to what is now North America. Icelandic oral tradition states that Columbus visited Iceland and stayed at a farm at Ingjaldshol during the winter of 1477 to 1478, likely arriving sometime in early autumn and leaving in late spring. And other sources also claim such a visit took place, but an article in the Geographical Journal in June 1970 evaluated the claims and found them wanting. While traditionally held as historical fact, the assertion of the voyage encountered growing scrutiny and scepticism among historians in the modern era. The alleged 1477 voyage has been a subject of historical curiosity, with accounts and documents pointing to Columbus as the protagonist of this early Atlantic expedition. However, as important factors are considered, an alternative perspective emerges. The narrative of Columbus's 1477 voyage to Iceland was upheld for centuries, primarily based on historical documents, navigational notes, and writings from the explorer's own son, Ferdinand Columbus. These sources have been the cornerstones of the argument that Columbus ventured to Iceland on this early voyage. The traditional story revolves around Columbus's quest to study the mysterious North Atlantic region and its purported impact on his later explorations. According to the traditional narrative, in 1477 a young Christopher Columbus, driven by his curiosity and ambition, embarked on a voyage to the northern reaches of the Atlantic Ocean. He is said to have reached Iceland, where he observed and documented the region's unique characteristics, including its climate, flora and fauna. One of the most intriguing aspects of this voyage is the mention of 50-foot tides in Columbus's accounts, which has been linked to Iceland. But the central hypothesis presented in the 1970 report challenged the conventional wisdom surrounding Columbus's 1477 voyage to Iceland. Instead of affirming that Columbus personally undertook this journey, it proposed an alternative scenario that Columbus gathered knowledge about the purported voyage to Iceland from sources other than his own experiences. This suggestion reimagines Columbus as an astute gatherer of information rather than a direct participant in the Iceland expedition. One of the key elements that cast doubt on Columbus's personal experience in Iceland is the confusion regarding the location of the aforementioned 50-foot tides. While Columbus's accounts seem to suggest that these remarkable tides were observed in Iceland, historical records indicate that such tidal variations were documented in the vicinity of Bristol in England during the 15th century. This discrepancy raises questions about whether Columbus actually witnessed these tides in Iceland, or if he might have been informed about them by others. To substantiate the hypothesis, the paper explored the possibility that Columbus, while docked in Huelva, Andalusia, Spain, might have interacted with Bristol seamen, potentially aboard the ship Trinity. During this period, Bristol was a hub of Atlantic exploration, and mariners from the port city were actively engaged in voyages to Iceland and beyond. It is plausible that Columbus had opportunities to converse with these seamen or intermediaries, exchanging valuable navigational insights. A critical aspect of the hypothesis concerns the transformation of information. It was suggested that the knowledge Columbus acquired from Bristol sources could have undergone a subtle change when he relayed it to his son or other scholars. This process of transmission might have contributed to the eventual confusion between Bristol and Iceland in the historical accounts. In essence, Columbus might have unintentionally conflated his sources, leading to an inaccurate representation of his own experiences. If the hypothesis holds merit, it has far-reaching implications for our understanding of Columbus's early years and his role in shaping the narrative of Atlantic exploration. So rather than being the primary source of knowledge about Iceland, Columbus would emerge as a collector of information from a diverse range of sources. If so, this revised perspective not only highlights the significance of the Bristol seamen and their contributions to early Atlantic exploration, but also underscores the complexities of historical research and the need to critically evaluate primary sources. In conclusion, the report challenged the prevailing narrative of Christopher Columbus's 1477 voyage to Iceland. 
While historical accounts have long attributed the journey to Columbus himself, it was proposed that he merely parroted the words of others. By re-evaluating the evidence and considering the possibility of Columbus acquiring knowledge about Iceland from Bristol seamen or intermediaries, the paper sought to shed new light on this intriguing episode in Columbus's life. So, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and most importantly subscribe, and you can also support the channel on Subscribestar via the link in the description, or via YouTube Super Thanks. Thanks for watching, bye for now.